Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Got Chris and Stacy with me. Hey y'all. Shalawama. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about how the solar flares will cause the pole shift that will actually trigger the Great Awakening or what some people call the Rapture or New Jerusalem or you know that great change that we're all the great reset the great reset will be a part of all of that and what we're going to do to cover this is we're going to look in the book called the keys of Enoch the book of knowledge the keys of Enoch uh, right. by JJ Hertog um, add a few of these verses okay it's gonna be kind of out of order um, so let's just jump right into it let's look first at verse key 118 verse 16 Thus, the program Israel will become the new plan of victory, which will allow the intelligence of this planet to freely move upon other planets and, at the same time, invite other planetary intelligence to commune with this planet. Talking about the program Israel. Mm -hmm. This book is talking on a scientific level, speaking about us Israel as a kind of an experiment kind of a program kind of a testing ground more like a culturing ground almost like a breeding ground of these people who will be cultivated through time in order to live in this new existence that he's going to be talking about here in the next verse when it talks about moving freely up on other planets, is that speaking of moving from mansion to mansion? Kind of. It's talking about how what we read about in the Third Testament and the great book of true life, how when we sleep, our spiritual being is able to go to other worlds. Right. Well, this is what it's talking about. And in the um, Bible, we read about how in the kingdom of heaven will be closer to our spiritual brothers in other words we'll be able to communicate with people in the spirit world but well, that's also what it's talking about here these other entities these other spirits on these other worlds will be able to communicate with them if that makes any sense yes let's go to the next verse verse 17 before the new story of creation happens, the earth will go through gross geomagnetic and catastrophic changes as the magnetic regions of the North and South Pole release their torque, spinning the shell of the earth into the new program of existence. So now this is talking about the pole shift. Right. You have the magnetic pole shift, which everybody is talking about. You, you hear several channels speaking about this so-called pole shift is supposed to shift our shift our magnetic field mm -hmm. well what they don't speak about is the accompanying earthquake that will go with it it may not happen at the same time it seems like there's a little bit of could be a little bit of a delay but what this is telling us is that once we have this magnetic pole shift there will also be a physical pole shift of the earth in other words the earth is going to spin right. as it changes its pole and once this does once this happens then we can go back to what it's talking about up there in verse 16 where it says this program Israel will become the new plan of victory mm -hmm. in other words this pole shift is what's going to cause the great awakening right right But we have more verses to cover. Let's look at 114 verse 7. All right, page 131. The higher evolution will change the terrestrial cubic space of our planetary model so that it becomes an exact spin model for the higher cubic function. The higher cubic function changes the vibratory environment of the planet, allowing man as human to be shifted to the next spectrum through the octal function. What's the 
The eyes? You have to go to the glossary, the index, and look it up. Octal, pertaining to the characteristic or property involving a selection, choice, or condition in which there are eight possibilities pertaining to the numeration system with a radix of eight. So octal just means that there's eight of them, eight functions. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to um, page 46, verse 27. These magnetic fields are aligned through aerials of magnetic energy which mark the points where energies from outer space pour into the Earth's surface. These are talking about the ley lines or the lines connected to the pyramids and the sphinx. Mm -hmm. These aerials are balanced on the Earth by magnetic north and south pole. And at the time when tremendous solar flare movements bombard these magnetic points of the Earth, the fields of the Earth will be set in cataclysmic imbalance spinning the shell of the earth to new magnetic meridians which find their balances equatorially so this is saying that the solar flare is going to cause the pole shift right and there'll be a new equator new north and south pole so if the solar flare causes the pole shift and the pole shifts causes the great awakening then the solar flare causes the great awakening or the rapture so to speak. So is a solar flare like the beginning of it or um, well, would you say that it all starts with the solar flare or yeah that's what I'm trying to say does it all start with the solar flare? At the time when tremendous solar flare movements bombard these magnetic points of the earth so yeah the solar flare triggers it. This is what we have going on now. We have these, like I said, certain channels that talk about this. They talk about how we're being bombarded by solar flares all the time, like once a month or more recent than that, more, more mm -hmm. often than that. Mm -hmm. And what this is saying here is that this here is going to cause the poles to shift. Well, what would cause a bombardment of solar flares? You know, you're saying that, you know, they happen like once a month. Are you saying that there will be like one every day? Or is that what it means by a bombardment of solar flares? I mean, you could look up how often we get hit. I mean, there's a lot of uh, people who track the information. We can probably pull up a table. Chris, you want to try to pull up a table right quick? Mm-hmm. Well, let me ask you this. Can a solar flare be stopped? Not Will by Will the us. government try to stop it? Is what I'm no. Okay. No, they won't even try. They cannot and they will not try. That's... No. Nothing we can even... Nobody can even imagine. I'm sitting here trying to run through like some science fiction head stuff in my head and you can't even imagine stopping a solar flare. <laughs> they get up to being bigger than the whole planet. Yeah, that's like cartoon kind of stuff where your umbrella just gets disintegrated. You know? <laughs> so here goes a list of solar flares, solar storms. The biggest one that we know of was 1989 when it knocked the power out in Canada and I think Northeastern United States. Yep, right here, March 1989. And before that, it was the Carrington event, which was a more global event, but nobody had electricity then, as far as, you know, the common man, so. Well, the next verse, um, verse 28, and I know that might not be in your notes, but I was wanted to ask you a question about it. It says, and once man understands how the Great Pyramid is a geophysical model of these magnetic changes in the earth, he will recognize that the pyramid is the actual foundation of stone placed directly in the center of the earth. So my question is, is it possible that the pyramids were put there for this reason? Um, yes, they were put there as a result of the pole shift. Okay. Every time the planet has gone through a pole shift, there 
the ley lines are rearranged and when the ley lines are rearranged there is a new pyramid built okay um even the last one the pyramid in giza the one that this is talking about we don't even believe it was built by human hands mm -hmm. um some say it was built from the top down mm -hmm. If that makes any sense at all. <laughs> no, really. Unless they got some anti-gravity. <laughs> yeah, definitely had anti-gravity. And this will happen again. We talked about it. Did we talk about this in our last class when we talked about... How they happen on a cycle. Well, Atlantis. We yeah. talked about the, um, the hidden world coming up out of the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we will get new ley lines and there will be a new pyramid that will be built. All right, so let's go on to 106, key 106, and let's look at a few verses there, uh, starting at about verse 30. All right, that, that may be along the, the other part of this class, part two of this class. So let's start back there at about verse 23 or so. In the formation of our local universe, the fallen lords of light imitated the blueprints of the sacred star groups of seven which are the matrix for the host of heaven. And by initiating their seed into these star regions, such as Ursa Major, these star systems became their midway stations, controlling negativity on lower planets. Now, what we need to know from this verse is how it's talking about this negativity coming from Ursa Major. Right. All right, so let's go on to verse 23, because that, that, that we're going to need to know that here in a second. The next evolutionary orbital level of creation works completely with the Brotherhood of Light, not under the gates of Ursa Major and Ursa Minor, but under the direction of Kema and Kezel, the thresholds of the Kachavim, the distant star universes. Now, if you look back up in verse 22, it tells us that this Ursa Major and Ursa Minor are responsible for negative energies right. being sent towards us saying that Ursa Major and such controlled the negativity on the lower planets. And these are the bears, Ursa Minor, Ursa Major, the small bear and the great bear. Right. And then it's talking about Kimmo and Kizu, who we would recognize as Pleiades and Orion. Mm -hmm. We prefer the Hebrew names, Kimmo and Kizu. But what he's, what he's doing here is creating separation from these star constellations. Right. And I know this is a bit confusing here but watch what happens let's, let's look at verse 24 intelligences in these distant universes are called upon not only to judge the earth but also to judge the gods who reign in these fallen stations of the sky we too who are on the threshold between the spiritual powers and humanity will be called upon to judge the angels who have been cast into our dimension of space during this cleansing of the sky fulfilling the words of first corinthians where it says, do you know that you shall judge the angels? Yeah, absolutely. And like we said, this book explains a lot of stuff on a more scientific level. But let's look at verse 25. The Big Dipper stands as the threshold that must be overcome by man on this planet before he will be set free of the consciousness image of the bear, which emanates thought forms of war and destruction. The Lords of Mizar and Megrez have sent out these thought forms to keep mankind on this planet continually involved in war and revolution. So if you understand what it's saying here is these star constellations, which we learn in, in, in you know, the books like Daniel, that the angels are these stars or the stars are actually angels somehow. You know, it's a little bit hard to understand until you start thinking about how Enoch was changed into Metatron. He was changed into a star. Right. Um, well, some of these stars are responsible for good energies and some of them are bad is what we're learning here is that these bare constellations, Ursa Minor and Ursa Major, are responsible for war and destruction. Right. Keeping people in war and revolution as well. The thing about Ursa Minor and Ursa Major like the Draconis constellation we're going to learn here are always in the air. They're always always visible. They're always visible. They all year long. Whereas Kimmel and Kizu are only visible for half the year or 
less than a quarter of the year respectively, Ursa Major and Ursa Minor are there all the time. Right. To keep mankind on this planet continually involved in war and revolution, fighting. Right. One of the things that it brings to my mind is when we talk about wishing upon a star. Uh, what star are we actually wishing upon? Um, well, if because you're going to wish upon a star, you might want to point towards Pleiades. <laughs> <so. laughs> yeah. There's a lot of positive energy that comes from that direction. That's where these brotherhood of light are um, emanating their energies from. The, but like we said, they're only there at certain times. Matter of fact, let's, let's look down at verse 30. For truly great nations and brothers and sisters of the covenant have offered sacrifices to Kema and Kizil. So that our creation may continue in the name of the Father through the seven divine energies which shape both the soul in the heavens and the physical embodiments in the lower heavens. You understand what he's talking about here? He's talking about people are worshiping those stars? Not necessarily. He's basically talking about the timing of our feast days here. Oh. And how they are related to star alignments. Right, right. Mm -hmm. When you look at the rising and the falling of this Pleiades, this Kemal, you find that this star constellation Kemal rises or has become visible in October mm. around the Feast of Tabernacles wow. and is there until the time of the Feast of Unleavened Bread when it, it goes away and is not visible for the rest of the year. Mm. So that's like the, um, the last and the beginning of our feast days. Absolutely. And, you know, maybe that's why the Jewish community considers that the beginning of the year in October, because mm -hmm. like you said, that's when the star constellation is visible. That's when it appears. That's when it becomes above the horizon in the nighttime when we could actually see it. All right. So let's jump down to verse 37. We see the Pilates in terms of the organic seed of the pneumaticoi the spiritual people of the Christ race. And we see the Pleiades in terms of the greater sacrifices of light and cosmology. Now, see what this is talking about here is how this Pleiades is associated with the Christ race. Right. Wow. Ursa Minor is associated with the bear race. Mm -hmm. Just like Draconis is associated with the dragon race. These are described as different types of people in, that we live that we live among today you mm -hmm. have the lamb people or the Christ type people you have the bear type people and then you have the dragon type people mm -hmm. but like we said these star constellations Draconis and Ursa Minor and Ursa Major are always in the sky well what it's talking about here and I'm gonna have to look closer to find the verse but what it's talking about here is how we when we have these star reconfiguration when we get the new heaven and the new earth Ursa Minor and, and Draconis won't be present in the sky anymore when we get these new heavens it's going to shift making Pleiades more dominant in the sky and that's where we're actually going to see the sign of the Son of Man in the sky right so in other words the bad stars will be shifted and go away. Um, and only the good ones will remain. Yeah, they, they, right. The, the stars that are causing the trouble will be moved out of our sight. They won't be allowed to project their negative energy on us, at least year round. Right. And then the ones that does want to project positive energy on us will be present. And so that's what's going to be the shift in humanity that's what's going to change humanity right and so many times you know it's hard for us to visualize because we've all been taught in school that stars are basically just rocks but um here we're learning and you know i'm learning as well when you say that the stars are actually angels and so this makes you see it in a different 
different way now. All right, so let's come back over to Key 118 where we started talking about this program Israel and how this shift of the poles will put the earth into a new program of existence or in other words will create this new heaven and this new earth but let's look at verse 18 during the completion of cycles of star progression our entire solar system will enter into a vacuum in space where no electromagnetic fields exist that's where we're at now that's why we're having all of these solar flares this is called an electromagnetic null zone at that time, cosmic waves will enter the polar areas of our Earth and penetrate into the very core of our globe. These are the solar flares that, we're, that we've been talking about, that we're hearing about in the news. These waves will not only release some 48.6 times 10 to the power of 15 ton miles of torque on the Earth, but will trigger unseen wave properties from the core of the Earth, placing catastrophic stress on the shell of the Earth and spinning the mantle of the earth. So this will be the great earthquake that we hear about that's supposed to shake down every building on the planet. Right. Okay. The world shall fulfill the cycles of rounds prophesied as she enters into a new meridian of time. This will be the kingdom of heaven. Right. So, but let's go on. The coming together of hidden scientific prophecy of the nine oracles will confirm the changing of the polar regions. After this purification, the potential omega is set within new spherical surface harmonies and the wonderful recreation of the world is allowed to proceed into a new cycle of husbandry. So to wrap all of this up, putting all of this together, the solar flare is going to trigger the realignment of our electromagnetic field this will be followed by the physical change of our earth like we says here 48.6 times 10 to the 15 ton miles of torque on the earth spinning the shell right so that our star alignments are not there anymore the new heaven will appear because the heaven that we are used to with star constellations like Virgo and Aquarius and Libra, there will be no more Libras. Right. There will be no more, we won't see that in the sky anymore. Because of the realignment, it will become unrecognizable. That's what it means by a new heaven. And also, the positive stars will be able to cast their light on us year round. Right. Which will make humanity stop being so interested in war and destruction and will become more Christ like. Mm -hmm. So would this be um, the new kingdom of heaven or the new kingdom? Absolutely. The new kingdom, the new Jerusalem. Yeah, and a lot of things are supposed to come with this, like healing. And that's, I guess that's what the scripture means when it says that the sun is going to provide this healing because once it knocks all of this negative energies off our planet, then we can start to recover. Right. It'll only be up from there. So I wonder, and this might, you know, be an ignorant question. Um, is that why, you know, because the stars are so, so visible um, during, that brings another question too, during the night, these um, Ursa Minor and Ursa Major, is that why so much uh, more evil occurs at night? Huh, that could be. Um, the sun is actually a buffer and so while and so one of the reasons why we can't hear from these positive stars is because of the sun is buffering out just like we can't see it mm -hmm. in the daylight well right. apparently somehow we can't feel its energy in the daylight either mm. and so then at nighttime we will be dominated by Ursa Major and Ursa Minor and even Draconis. We didn't talk about much about that one in this. Matter of fact, do a, do a search for Draconis. That may be the verse that I was missing. And also, is the... Um, could that be... You know, when you said that the... Um, the stars of Kiz, Kizil and Kizmo... I don't know, I 
screwed that up. But they're so much more um, visible in the months of October. Could that be one of the reasons why they have thrown in the holiday of Halloween to disrupt it? To disrupt, setting the, the to disrupt the positive um i guess you would call vibrations more so throwing in the negative of it well that's that is you know alignments they they're basing the pagan holidays on the tropical year so but i don't understand the, the science behind what they're trying to do what halloween would be pointing to but absolutely that could be what they're doing is offsetting this positive energy with some particular thing that they are doing. Mm, real interesting. Here's 108.59. Mm -hmm. In this sacred region in the midst of the earth, the elect will be seen as the messianic key holders. The priesthood of Ur, explaining how the circle of the earth's axis and the arc of the Alpha Draconis will be opened and removed from the mid heavens. Their keys will proclaim how the white shepherds of Terrace Orion, the mansion of the greatest bulls, and the region of the lamb, the region of the Christ, will reign over the remnant seed. What he's talking about is how Revelation says that the dragon is going to fall. The dragon is going to go. The dragon is going to descend. It's going to take a third of the stars with him. That's telling you that the, the, the earth is going to shift by one third. Because a third of the stars, just like when the dragon goes, a third of the stars are going to go with them. Mm -hmm. So that would be a third of the stars and the constellations going under the horizon. Yeah, but it's not. But keep going. It's not telling us what we need. To. This is 108 verse 14. Alpha Draconis represents the devouring negative entropy, which keeps the planet spheres like Earth changed to the entropy of singular sun systems allowing intelligence to be devoured by the body of the lion sun, were it not for the intervention of the Ophanim into this furnace of fire. So, and this one, this Draconis, is just like Ursa Minor, providing negative energy to our planet, and once we have this pole shift, it will be out of our vision. We won't be able to see it anymore. Right. All right, guys. Well, if you got anything out of this video, hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button, but leave us a comment either way. And Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.